Hello and welcome to the Explosive Weekend Debate with me, Ayushman Singh Jamwal. Days after Rahul Gandhi sparked a massive controversy over his remarks in the United Kingdom, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has launched a scathing attack on the Congress. Prime Minister Modi was in Polbound, Karnataka today, where he said that some people are trying to harm Indian democracy in the same land where he unveiled the statue of Lingayat reformer and pro-democracy advocate Lord Basaveshwar. Without naming Rahul Gandhi, the Prime Minister said, the comments are an insult to Lord Basaveshwar and 130 crore Indians. This led to a spree of attacks by senior BJP leaders. UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath and Union Minister and a Métis MP Smriti Irani also slammed Rahul Gandhi. The Congress again defended Rahul Gandhi's speech and claimed he only spoke the truth. The political war has escalated just a day before the second phase of the budget session and fireworks can be expected in Parliament. The controversy also comes just months ahead of the Karnataka elections. The Prime Minister Modi has now made sure to make Rahul's comments a point of contention between the Congress and the BJP. So will Rahul Gandhi's comments really have an impact on the Karnataka elections? We debate that on the show today. See, for example, how the agencies are used. You can ask any opposition leader about how the agencies are used. Uh, my phone had Pegasus on it. That simply was not happening uh, when we were in power. So they, they, there are things that are very obvious and are apparent to everybody. The है कि लंदन में ही भारत के लोकतंत्र पर सवाल उठाने का काम किया गया भारत के लोकतंत्र की जड़ें हमारे सदियों के इतिहास से सींची गई है दुनिया की कोई ताकत भारत की लोकतंत्र की परंपराओं को नुकसान नहीं पहुंचा सकती एक तरफ वैश्विक मंच पर बढ़ती हुई भारत की ताकत का भारत के गौरव काम की यशोकाफा दुनिया का रही है वहीं दूसरी तरफ कुछ लोग हैं जो भारत को वैश्विक मंच पर वह सम्मान नहीं देना चाहते हमारी राष्ट्र का ये गौरव है कि हम आज विश्व की पांचवी सबसे बड़ी अर्थव्यवस्था बन चुके हैं इस विषय को सम्मान देने की बजाय इस प्रकार की टिप्पणियां श्री गांधी ने की हैं वो इस बात का संकेत है कि 24 में भी उन्हें हार का अंदेशा हो And let's get to our guests. I'm joined by Sanju Verma, BJP National Spokesperson, as well as Ashpreet Khadial, Congress Spokesperson, and Tushar Gupta, Political Analyst. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining us on CNN News 18. And before I begin the debate, I want to just make this clear that I will give everyone time to speak. So I request that please don't talk over each other so we can have a nice and a good discussion uh, ahead of the political fight in Karnataka and as well as ahead of the parliament session. Ashdeep Khadial, I'll come to you first. Uh, this entire pitch that Rahul Gandhi made from London that Indian democracy is under siege. Now, the political destiny of this country has been set by the Ahmadmi, the common voter who has exercised that ballot in every election. Some have favoured you, some have favoured the BJP, but the BJP is on a, a big a winning streak in the past uh, few years. Do you feel that Rahul Gandhi is confusing his political inadequacy with an attack on democracy? Would you ask this? Uh, uh, there's eco. Uh, when I, I can hear my own voice, could you please have that fixed? Yeah. yeah, I'll have that fixed. Go ahead. Yeah, better. Thank you. Now, kindly allow me a minute and a half uninterrupted. This question that you have asked me, mm. it should it should first be posed to the Bharatiya Janata Party because back in the day, in 2015, on Chinese soil, Mr. Uh, Modi, the Prime Minister of India, said that earlier we used to be ashamed of being born in India. Now, I want to ask the Bharatiya Janata Party this question. Do you agree with that statement? Were you ashamed of being born in India? And giving the statement... And that to buy a Prime Minister, should the Bharati Janta Party not condemn it first? Does it not reflect upon their double standards? Is it not insulting our cultures, our traditions, our uh, uh, citizens of India? 
and and what about the bharatiya janata party's uh, statement another statement that they gave on foreign affairs that in the last 60 to 70 years india has not done anything was that not demeaning the world looks forward to us it looks up to india it's the world's largest democracy and you go on to say that what have we done in 70 years now the bharatiya janata party should apologize and they should condemn these statements statements we were talking about us in number 2 criticism of the government is not criticism of india let's make that very clear when the bharatiya janata party shows zero tolerance for dissent for having a difference in opinion with them that is when they do away with the very democracy that is when they do away with the freedom of speech and expression that we have they do not want us to speak in india our mics get muted in the parliament our statements get expunged for example when we demand a, a probe on adani issue and you know if we speak otherwise outside parliament there are cases registered against us ed it cbi sebi you talk about you talk of mamta banerjee's nephew abhishek manerji mk stolen's daughter sharad pawar charanjit chandni kay agarwal mr kejriwal mr sodhya um, uh, mr kavita and many more and there is there is no opposition party in india that does not have an it ed cbi sebi case pending but however there is not even a single leader of the bjp that has a single ed case but according to association of democratic reforms certain mps and mlas are the maximum of the bharatiya janata party that are criminal cases number 2 the bharatiya janata party is basically trying to use this as a tool to campaign in karnataka the bharatiya janata party would go to any limb would cross any and every limb sorry please go ahead finish your point i'll right. give you 30 more seconds then right. i'll move on right. to the other guests right right thank you so you see the democracy is actually in danger we we happen to be the world's largest democracy if our democracy is on the verge of collapsing it has an effect on all the democracies in the world they should know this and a very good example of how the democracy is collapsing is is the pattern that i showed you before of all the opposition parties not just parties it also goes to the media bbc ndtv the quint alt news denik bhaskar subjected by the subjected to raids and surveys by all these agencies it ed cbs ep and not just that operation lotus by the bharatiya janata party you see they have been goa okay ashpita ashpita have, have to move on to the other guest i'll give you last okay. 10 seconds make your point thank you so see you 10 see seconds. The, uh, the bharatiya janata party has another pattern of abuse of power as to how they have been able to do away with the democracy goa karnataka maharashtra madhya pradesh assam bihar arunachal manipur meghalaya punjab telangana so they have left no stone unturned you know to do away with the democracy and when these people join their party all the cases go away right. captain okay. amrinder singh okay you made captain your point Amr- now. last okay. point last point last point last point last point last point captain Just amrinder point. singh very very joined the bharatiya janata party itd cases got silent uh, talk of uh, mr rane talk of uh, mr mukul roy talk of uh, uh, you know all the other leaders mr you know, mr this cannot be a monologue Ma'am, he He's will been not... speaking for the last five minutes. Right, but he, but I'll, I'll, I'll make sure he doesn't interrupt you, Sanju Verma. Okay, uh, Ashpreet Khadiyal, uh, last ten seconds, please. Thank you so much. So you see, talk of Mukul Roy, talk of, to, talk of talk of talk of talk of Sugendu Adhikari, talk of Mr. Narayan Rani, and there are many more leaders. When they were in the Bharti, when they were in other parties, they had cases pending against them. The moment they go into the Bharti Janata Party, all the stains are done away with. There right. are some okay. Machines, okay. You've made that point now, but 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 at, but at no point state. have you been able to uh, able to make sense of the fact that why do you why does the Congress Party lose election after election after election? If there is such a crisis in this country, if there is such a attack on democracy, why aren't you able to communicate that to the people? Why don't they vote in your favor, Sanju Verma? Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, Ayushman, I would just like to make a couple of points. First and foremost. uh i agree that criticizing uh, the bharatiya janata party is not equal to criticizing india uh, at the same time when rahul gandhi goes abroad and says that china acquired 2000 square kilometers illegally i mean who told rahul gandhi that china has acquired 2000 square kilometers under the modi dispensation did the pla come and say something to him whisper something to him in his ears secondly look at the audacity of rahul gandhi he undermines the valor and the supreme sacrifice of our pulwama martyrs by calling the pulwama terror attack as just another car bomb blast and i want to remind your audience that rahul gandhi is a habitual and repeat offender 
This is the same Rahul Gandhi who has recently, as January 2023, despite Rajnath Singh, the Defence Minister's statement, despite Amit Shah, the Home Minister's statement, despite EANS Jaishankar's statement saying that not an inch of land has been acquired. What did Rahul Gandhi say? Chief ki sena ne ghus kar hamara hamari na keval zameen par kabza kiya par hamari sena ki jam kar pitai ki. This is the language used by a man who fancies himself as the next best thing after brown bread and thinks he's going to be the prime minister in 2024. So much for hallucinations. But I will come to the moot point. I will tell you and your audience, democracy khatre mein kab kab hai? Democracy khatre mein kab hai? When Jawaharlal Nehru, uh, Rahul Gandhi's great grandfather, passed the first amendment curbing free speech in 1951. Democracy was crushed in 1975 when Indira Gandhi imposed the draconian emergency. Democracy was crushed in 1976 when Indira Gandhi curbed the power of judicial review of courts by passing the 42nd Amendment. Democracy was crushed in 1988 when Rajiv Gandhi surreptitiously tried to pass the Anti-Defamation Bill. Democracy was crushed in 2013 when the Sonia Gandhi slash Manmohan Singh led government tried to introduce the communal violence bill and undermine the freedom of Hindus, thank God that bill never saw the light of the day. Democracy is crushed repeatedly when Harsh Mandar, who's on the board of Open Society Foundation, was also a part of Sonia Gandhi's National Advisory Council and was proxy running a whole lot of policy decision making in this country. Right. Democracy is crushed when Rahul Gandhi goes abroad and lampoons the country, saying, Mere to phone. my phones are hacked, excuse me. Chief Justice N.V. Ramana, who was the Chief Justice in, Chief Justice in August 2022, his statement is out in the public domain, right. where he categorically saying that no Pegasus spyware was found in the 29 phones that were supervised and examined by a Supreme Court Monitor Committee. I right. will just say this to you. Rahul Gandhi, Ayushman, if you notice, he has lost 5-0, 50 elections for his party out of the 54 big and small elections that have been held in the last nine years. This is a man who finished his Bharat Joro or Bharat Toro Yatra, whatever you want to call it, on 30th January 2023. Right. On 16th February, give me 30 seconds. On 16th February 2023, Tripura went to polls. On 27th February 2023, Meghalaya and Nagaland went to polls. Rahul Gandhi had all the time in the world to go skiing at Gulmarg, but he only made a short whistle stop tour at Shillong. He had no time to visit Tripura, he had no time to visit Nagaland, and then when they are wiped out in Northeast, he says democracy khatre mein hai. All I will tell the crown prince, pardon me, the clown prince is that Mungeri Lal ke Haseen sapne dekhte rahi hai, rahi hai. forget 2024, even in 2029, the Congress, which is a fractious house, cannot even dream of coming to power because Prime Minister Modi, Amit Shah, JP Nadda are 24-7 politicians, Absolutely. whereas Rahul okay. Gandhi is a full-time vacationer and a part-time politician. Right, okay, so that pitch coming in from the BJP. Tushar, I want to focus on the Karnataka elections uh, itself. Now, Prime Minister Modi clearly has flipped the script by drawing in Rahul Gandhi's statements in London when it comes to the elections uh, in Karnataka, even invoking a Lingayat icon in Basaveshwar. Uh, but my point is that the one asset that the BJP had against the Congress was that the BJP didn't have the taint of corruption. Now, now in the wake of the Virupak Shappa case, and Prime Minister Modi, you know, didn't even mention it in his uh, speech today, the entire taint of corruption. Because one of the biggest, uh, I think, messages he sent out in, in any election rally is that, na khaunga, na khane dunga. That pitch was missing from the BJP's campaign today. Do you think the Prime Minister missed an opportunity, number one? And number two, do you think this entire thing is a, is a kind of a diversionary tactic away from the taint of corruption? Because... The Prime Minister knows when it comes to targeting Rahul Gandhi on the issues of Vikas as well as nationalism, the BJP always comes on top. Look, there are a few things there that need to be addressed. One, at some point within the campaign, 
the bjp will have to address the issue of corruption that is surfacing in karnataka mm-hmm. the investigations will have to happen the people who are in the scanner will have to answer that has to happen it's not even an if it is a when the bjp cannot run away from it and i'm sure the prime minister will also not run away from it but what rahul gandhi has done i mean he's a stellar example of how you neutralize your 6 months worth of bharat jodo yatra in 3 days mm-hmm. he's given the bjp on a platter the issues they can use against him not just in the karnataka elections but also in all the upcoming elections until 2024 look ayushman there are a lot of people in india who do not want to vote for the bjp they might vote for a regional party they might vote for some other party but no individual in india would be okay with the idea of a foreign intervention in our democratic process or our institutions what rahul gandhi missed he misread the room entirely he did not understand that forget the bjp voters irrespective of their 250 million the other 1 billion voters would not be happy by the prospect of one of the leaders calling out for foreign intervention in a foreign soil and that to united kingdom of all places in our institutions and the audacity of the congress spokesperson not just the one here but on all channels on social media on twitter wherever they are defending that statement they are making mm-hmm. it worse for rahul gandhi so of course for the bjp this is something they're going to use and they're going to use happily in the karnataka election in the elections in the year ahead in 2024 because what rahul gandhi has done he is literally on a platter served the bjp his political defeat and coming back to modi's criticism of india on foreign soil look there has been criticism by the prime minister about the policy initiatives and we do it every now and then was nehru wrong in investing in heavy industries absolutely was nehruvian socialism a drag on the economy absolutely but never has the prime minister criticized or questioned the idea of india never has the prime minister gone out and said india is a union of states and it's not a country as we think of it to be never has the prime minister spoken to the minorities on foreign soil and asked do you identify yourself as indians the right problem here is rahul gandhi has not made a policy attack he would be well within his right to do so he could have attacked the prime minister on economy on the handling of covid on 10000 other things but he did that one very thing which will upset 1.3 billion indians absolutely you question the, the in- character of the indian nation as we know it Absolutely. no voter be it a congress voter be it a bjp voter be it even a communist voter even though how less they are remain now they won't be okay with this and this is where the congress has got itself in a corner they will have to fight this issue in every election for the next few years Absolutely. it's not going to be that you, simple yeah tushar i think you've made that point that you know that you've questioned the entire process that makes us the biggest democracy uh, in the world and you know it's akin to what donald trump says that the whole system is rigged after he lost uh, the elections ashmit i want to get you on this like ahead of the karnataka elections the congress is already muddying the water you've already written to the chief election commissioner and said that we don't want uh, electronic voting machines from the states where the bjp has won your anyway question before even the elections begin you anyway questioned the process by moving the central election commission telling this uh, the chief election commissioner excuse me telling him that please ensure that evms from B, from the states where the bjp has won do not come into karnataka because we feel that something can go wrong with those voting machines you've anyway questioned the entire democratic process you've anyway handed more ammunition to the bjp when it says that when you win Oh, democracy is great, but when you are on a losing streak, then democracy khatre mein. See, recently, uh, a, a very good uh, verdict has come from the Honorable Supreme Court, visa v the Chief Election Commission, and uh, the Chief Election Commissioners and the Election Commissioners that the LOP, that the Prime Minister and the Chief Justice of India would decide. Now, the Bharatiya Janata Party had, you know, vigorously defended. and opposed this and back not just in the honorable supreme court they gave a they gave a counter affidavit there but back in the day also they used to oppose it now you know we have our reservations about the bharatiya janata party we have put forth our questions the fact of the matter is that the bharatiya janata party's pattern and history is so questionable that anyone would doubt that you see these agencies no, no. like my, these my, my question, question remains yeah. very very simple can mm. evms from himachal pradesh come to karnataka if not the states where the bjp won see that's 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 something that is secondary primary is that that we have reservations about the bharatiya janata party's conduct there's a massive history of operation lotus and you said one thing you said that if that's true at speed then why has the bharatiya janata party not been ousted from you know uh, from the government well uh, slowly but surely this will happen 
there was a time back in the day when the bjp was at two seats today there are two time ki satta party that time changed so will this my, time. my entire point Number is you are questioning the entire democratic process yeah. fine my i agree time. i agree that you're saying bjp was on two seats and now and now they're in power but now you've questioned the entire democratic process itself because if, if you win then democracy is great if bjp is winning oh something's no, wrong just, with the evm I'll tell you why we are questioning this. Kindly, kindly allow me a minute on it. Yeah, please. just yeah. one minute. I'll give you sixty yeah, seconds. Yeah, please done, go ahead. Yeah, done. So you see, the ED, the number of cases that it has registered, ninety-five percent are against the opposition parties. Number two, the conviction rate of the ED is zero point zero five percent. That means that I didn't even ask you that question. Cases. Okay, I'll move to Sanjeev Varma. Sanjeev Varma, please go ahead. See, that is Sanjeev Varma, please go ahead. Ashwin, I'm asking you a very wow. basic question. Is, you know, you don't want to answer that. that. Please, please, uh, Sanjeev Varma, please go ahead. Ayushman, Sanjeev Varma, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. The problem is Sanjeev Varma, please Ayushman. go ahead. You know, I I can't hear this man is heckling me, and it's difficult to hear what you're asking. Please go ahead. Uh, your reaction to what? Thank uh, you. Yeah, go ahead. You know, I will be very clear and very straightforward with you. Uh, you know, Madal Virupak Shappa. the bjp mla who's been accused of bribery and his son uh i'm not going to stand in here and say oh the bjp stands in solidarity with him while father and son are out on bail and a lokayukta probe is going on i will say this with a straight face if they are guilty they should not be spared but the same congress which is quick to target the bjp in karnataka on corruption issue this is the same congress which went to the supreme court and asked the supreme court to quash the investigation against sonia gandhi and rahul gandhi in the national herald scam where they are accused of concealing taxable income to the tune of 434 crores and more so i want to ask the congress party why is it that sonia gandhi out on bail in national herald scam rahul gandhi out on bail in national herald scam teach damram out on bail in the inx media scam why is it that these leaders continue to be people who you glorify so please take a clear stand on corruption you do not have a clear stand your biggest leaders are nose deep in corruption show me one corruption charge against prime minister modi show me one corruption charge against jp nadda show me one corruption charge against amit shah himmat hai himmat hai to say that they are corrupt prime minister modi has an impeccably squeaky squeaky clean reputation and that i think is his biggest strength when prime minister says na khaunga na khane dunga that is not just a slogan na khaunga na khane dunga mein hum vishwas karte hain right 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 i think i, th- I think this war of words now as we as, as we get closer to the elections this war of words is only going to escalate thank you sanju varma ashmeet khadiyal and tushar gupta for joining us on cnn news 18 for this very explosive debate that's all we have to pack it on the show thank you for watching